Welcome back to Advent of Code 2025. It's almost midnight here, so I'm going to keep this quick once again. Uh, for today's problem, we have a bunch of rolls of paper on a grid, and we can only access a roll of paper with a forklift if there are fewer than four rolls of paper in the eight adjacent positions. Now, for the rolls on the edge, we only have, for example, five rolls of paper, or five adjacent positions, and for the corners, we only have three. Um, so in that case, then, we just count the adjacent spaces around the outside as empty. So for example, in this example, we have 13 rolls of paper that are accessible, most of them along the edge or the corners, as they have fewer space, they have automatic free spaces. Um, and then there is also one in the middle of the grid. So we can just take each line from the input and then keep a count of the number of rolls that can be reached. Uh, we'll iterate through each row with its index and through each column and its column index. And then we'll want to check firstly that it is actually a roll. So if the character is not the at sign, then we'll skip it. And then we'll check the count of rolls in its proximity. So what we can do to uh, for this is we'll first look at the rows that are relevant. So the relevant rows are going to be the one before, the one at, and the one after our current row. So that's going to be row, uh, sorry, grid from r minus one up to r plus two because it's exclusive on the right side. So we'll go from the row before us to the row after us. Um, however, if r is currently 0, then r minus 1 is going to be negative 1, and so that won't work correctly. So we'll want to take the max of 0 and r minus 1. And on this side, we don't need to care because if we set an index past the end of our array in a slice, then it will simply not include the extra elements. So those are each of the rows, and then we can just say for uh, for sub row in this grid, we can do basically the same thing. For each of the for each of the rows consisting of the row above, at, and after our current position, we'll also look at its character at, before, and after our current column. So that's going to be the exact same max of 0 and c minus 1 up to c plus 2. And so that'll be our region. And then what we can do is we can do row dot count at sign for row in region. And then we can take the sum of that. So that'll give us the number of roles, the number of neighboring roles. And then we need this count to be fewer than four. However, because our region is currently the 3 by 3 surrounding our current position, it will include our current position as well. And that will always be an at sign, so if we need the 8 surrounding positions to have 4 or fewer, or sorry, fewer than 4 rolls, that means that we need to have the 3 by 3 including the at sign that we're already at to have fewer than 5 or less than or equal to 4. So if this count is less than or equal to 4, then we'll increase our count by 1. And that'll get us our answer for part one. For part two, we are basically just iteratively applying this. And each time if a roll of paper can be accessed, we can remove it. And once it's removed, then we may be able to remove, to access more rolls of paper. So we basically repeatedly do this process until eventually we have a grid state in which we're not able to remove any rolls. And once we have that, we stop and we output the total number of rolls of paper that can be removed in all of the iterations. So this is fairly straightforward. What we can do is just repeatedly apply this algorithm and until we no longer remove any rolls. And each time we can just create a copy of the grid and each time we, found, we find a role that we can access, we just remove it from the copy. So what we're going to do here is 
loop infinitely, we'll create a copy of the grid. So we'll do um, this. Or I guess, yeah, I guess for this, since we're going to be modifying the grid, we also need to convert each line into a list because you cannot modify strings by assigning individual characters. So we'll make it just lists. And actually, I'm going to do this here as well, just because usually it's preferable to work with lists instead of strings as your rows, just because you can't modify the strings. Um, so we'll do this. And this syntax basically means to take a slice from the beginning of the array to the end of the array. Those are the default values. And so if we take a slice from the start to the end of an array, we just get the array itself. But this creates a new copy of the array, which means that when we mutate a row of copy, it won't modify the same row of grid. OK. We're also going to keep track of the number of modifications we make. So basically, uh, iteration count is going to be the number of roles we can access in this iteration. And so in this loop here, in addition to increasing now the iteration count by one, we will also set the character at the copy of our grid at that position to a dot, because once we've accessed this role, we will remove it in the next iteration. Then at the end, we just check if the iteration count is equal to zero. That means that we found no roles we can access, which means we can exit the loop. Otherwise, we increase the count by the count for this iteration and set the grid to the previous copy. And that'll give us our answer for part two. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for day five.